Okay, so today we're going to talk about the double acting ram pump. So what is a double acting ram pump? A double acting ram pump is very similar to a single acting where you have your inlet supply, waste valve, comes up to your inside valve, pressure tank, and delivery line. Okay, that's very, very basic, simple explanation of the parts that are required in a single acting. Uh, with a double acting, what you're doing is you're bringing a second inlet supply source of pure spring water to be pumped by dirty water or creek water. Uh, it could be from a pond, lake, stream, you know, whatever source you have to power your pump. You're bringing in an, an extra supply of pure spring water that gets pumped. So what you have here is this valve is facing downward like that. Any water that's in this chamber, and this is also assuming that you kind of understand the general basics of how a single acting ram works. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on, on the pressure surges and how it all really works in this video because there's plenty of other videos out there that talk about that. We're going to focus mainly on the double acting side of it. Um, but anyways, so you have this inlet supply here of spring water. And I'm going to bring this out here past my waste valve to show you. Really, you should, you should probably start right about in this area with your uh, second check valve. But just for illustration purposes, Okay, so this here is going to be a check valve. This is going to be your standpipe. Which needs to be about 24 inches tall. And your check valve here. Uh, the sources I was looking at was saying that uh, was really it was showing that this needs to be a lift check valve. Okay, lift check valves are mainly used in the locomotive industry. I think it's some type of a steam uh, lift valve mechanism, and I couldn't get my hands on one for very cheap, so I decided to put an inline spring check valve in. Now this check valve needs to have the spring removed, and it needs to be facing forward. Right, arrow facing forward toward the pump. And, and so what's happening here is you have spring water, or you know, clean drinking water, coming in, fills up the standpipe, and it goes in uh, through the check valve and it comes into the pump and it fills up this chamber right here. Okay, underneath this valve. It's gonna come in and you want it to be as close to this inside valve as possible. Technically, you could probably put a T in on this connection with reducers and, and run your spring water in right here, but I cannot stress enough that you really want to put your spring line connection directly under that valve. That's very important, okay? What I did on my pump is I drilled a hole inside of my brass valve right here, and I took a brass threaded fitting, put it in the hole, made sure it was nice and tight, and I soldered it in with a blowtorch. And that worked really well. Uh, it's a really nice tight seal. It's, you know, it's, it's not going to leak or anything like that. And that's what I did because I, I wanted to tap right into that valve, right directly under that valve seat. And so what's going to happen is when you, uh, you should have a valve right here also, by the way. So when you open this valve first, everything's closed, you open this valve, you're going to let spring water in to the pump. It's going to fill up this chamber, and it's going to come down, okay? It's going to come all into your pump right here. And you're going to open your ramp pump valve, and you're going to start your pump with your waste valve. 
just like a single acting ram pump, that's how you're going to start it. And the water that's right here in this chamber, okay, water is a hydraulic fluid, so when it's sitting here in this chamber, this creek water is going to push against it a little bit. It's going to mix right here some, but as soon as it starts cycling, it's when your waste valve gets pushed down and starts pushing water out and then it snaps shut, it's going to send that shock wave through your pump, opening this valve for a fraction of a second, sucking in a little bit of pure spring water into your pressure chamber, and then it's going to close back shut before your creek water has any time to mix in this area right here. And what's going to happen is as soon as that shuts back closed, there's going to be a pulse that goes backwards and opens this waste valve again, and it's going to snap shut and send that pressure wave again. And it's going to start all over with this valve opening for a fraction of a second, sucking in pure spring water, and snapping shut before this creek water has any time to mix. So there is no gasket. There's no seal. There's no valve in between your spring water and your creek water. You're literally pumping spring water with your creek water. And now there is about one-third of a mixture of spring water and creek water that's going to waste out of your waste valve. You're able to pump up to about two-thirds of spring water into your pressure chamber, which then, of course, is going to go into your delivery pipe. So that is, very generally speaking, how it works. Um, to further understand the concept, because there, there is a lot of confusion on how this works, why does it work, um, it, because it, it doesn't seem like this should work. You know, you're sending very large spikes of pressure with this creek water through the pump. How is it that that wouldn't, you know, this check valve here and the fact that you have an open line right here, how is it that that wouldn't interfere with the timing? Um, well, to further understand the concept, if you take a pipe, right here, and on one side of the pipe, you have creek water coming in, and on the other side of the pipe, you have spring water coming in at the same pressure. Both fluids are going to meet somewhere in the middle, all right, and they're going to mix. There's going to be a section of maybe one-third of this pipe that's mixed, spring water and creek water. Both ends of the pipe, I'd say, I don't know, roughly one-third, if you have a foot-long pipe, roughly, you know, part of the end of your pipe, this side of the pipe is going to be pure, uncontaminated creek water. This side of the pipe is going to be pure, uncontaminated spring water. For maybe a few seconds, both sides of the pipe are going to remain pure and uncontaminated. So if you take a large pressure wave on the creek water side, let's say you put a valve in right here on the spring water side. If you take a large pressure spike on the creek water side pushing in, while this valve is open, so this creek water is pushing, 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 pushing. You can literally take water, which is a fluid, and push other water. So if you take this pressure spike and you push it through this pipe, what's going to come out of this pipe first is going to be pure, uncontaminated spring water. Now right about here at this point, when this water gets right to the edge, let's say you close that valve off right at the last second. Everything that came out of the end of that pipe is going to be pure, uncontaminated spring water. And then you open this valve again, spring water is going to come in, and then you send another pressure spike this way. At the very last second, you close this valve, everything that came out of the end of this pipe is going to be pure, uncontaminated spring water. And that's the basic concept behind the double acting. That was the easiest way that I could explain it, um, because in, in my opinion, this system shouldn't work. Um, I've been building ramp pumps for a while now on my own property and testing them and, and kind of playing around with them. And the timing is very critical. The way the valves open and close is very critical. Just the smallest adjustment can really change the way that this thing runs. 
And so you're adding a check valve right here and a secondary inlet source, an open pipe into your pump. Um, it's really incredible. Uh, it's, it's amazing that this actually works. And um, I do have that video that I posted of the dye test where I was showing how the water was remaining separated um, in that video. And, uh, and like I said, it's just amazing that this works. So basically with the double acting ram, you have water everywhere. It's, it's in the pump. Water is primed, the air is out, it's every, everything's ready to go. Your waste valve is closed and your valves are open. So what you do is you push this waste valve down. It's going to spurt out water and start your cycle. As soon as this slams shut, the pressure shock wave is going to get sent through the pump, opening this valve, spurting in a little bit of spring water and closing before the creek water has any time to do anything. And... As soon as this shock wave gets sent through the pump, while that valve is opening, it's going to also send that shock wave back through this line, closing this check valve, which is very important that you have that because if you didn't have that, that shock wave, wave would want to get sent through this open supply line. Your timing would be completely off. Okay, the pump would not run. It, it wouldn't want to run. All right, so we've talked a little bit about how it works, um, the setup, the parts you need. I can go into a little bit more detail on the specifics. This standpipe right here for your spring water, uh, it needs to be a minimum of 18 inches tall. And of course, you're going to have to open this valve so that you're getting water all the way to the top. Um, I, I've got, I think, about a 30 inch standpipe on mine. You're only required to have about 18 to 24 inches of standpipe. I just wanted to be extra sure that I had enough um, spring water coming in. You need that valve. You need the check valve facing forward with no spring. And as I mentioned before, this connection here needs to be directly under that valve as close as you can. Um, I went ahead and built my pump with my delivery line connected directly to my pressure tank. And the reason for that was because I wanted to keep my pump as compact as possible. I was already adding the second line here, and I already had the 245s instead of a 90. Like usually, you just have a 90 right here. Um, so I wanted to keep it as compact as possible, and that's the way I built mine. Your spring water supply line needs to be the same diameter as your delivery line. So if you're running an inch and a quarter ram pump, and you have a three quarter delivery pipe, your spring line can. Uh, supply line needs to be the same diameter as your delivery pipe. So if you're running a two inch ram, one inch delivery, you have a one inch supply line for your spring. Uh, same thing, you know, if I could run through the examples, but you know, of course, like I've, I mentioned before, if you're into ram pumps and you've already built them before, um, you should kind of understand a, a little bit about how the single acting works. Um, so, you know, if, if you have a one inch ram, half inch delivery, you have a half inch supply line. And on mine, my supply for my spring is actually neck, like directly next to the supply for the creek. I've got 15 feet of head pressure on the creek. Um, but you don't need that much for your spring supply. You literally only need about 24 inches or so. You can run your spring water supply line in from any direction. Okay, You can run it in from this side. You can run it in from the front, the back. Um, it, can, it, can be, it can come in at, at any direction. It doesn't have to be the same direction as your supply, you know, for the creek or dirty water. It doesn't have to be any of that. Um, it can come in from any direction. And please just, you know, if you, if you want to build one of these pumps, please just follow these instructions as closely as possible. It took me a long time to hunt this information down. For some reason, there's not a lot of information out there on the double acting the true double acting. There are videos that are labeled double acting. Um, however, I'm not sure why the people labeled them that way because that's not what they are. It's, it's not a true double acting ram. Um, they have like two ram pumps hooked up to one delivery and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, it, they just shouldn't have labeled the video double acting ram because it's, that's not what it is. And I have yet to see a video explaining this whole thing right here, explaining this concept and how to set it up. I have not seen a single video out there on how to do that. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I've spent countless hours looking and searching. And even the web pages that I, I did eventually find the information on 
were scattered. You know, you had a, a bits and pieces of information here and there, and even then, I had to really search for them. Um, but hopefully, that helps somebody out. The concept is very, very, very simple, and built. And hooking this up is very simple. You can take a single acting RAM pump and convert it into a double acting RAM pump, and um, it's it's just that easy. You know, you you're talking about a couple connections, a check valve, a standpipe. I mean, depending on how far away you are and how much supply line you need, you're talking about maybe forty dollars to hook up a double acting ram pump, and then you can let your creek water pump your spring water. And it's just an amazing concept. It's an amazing idea. It's it's incredible that it actually works. It'll be up to you to figure out how you want to actually run the lines, install it, hook it up. Um, I've got that video showing how mine works, and you can see you know a live example of it running and working, and how I set it up. Um, so you can you know it's it's going to be up to you to set it all up and get your spring line in there and get it screened and all that. Um, and once again, I just hope this helps somebody figure this out.